Hello everyone, I hope you're living your confinement well like I do. It's a perfect time to process your photos. So um, you can hear the sound quality is pretty good because uh, a couple of years ago I had the idea of starting some podcast and I bought a fancy microphone uh, in Bangkok where I was living at the time and uh, actually never ever used it once. So this is the first time I'm using my iRig Studio microphone. If you like that, the sound of my voice, maybe I'm going to start this podcast because there won't be much to do otherwise. Um, but today we're going to talk about processing images. So in the previous video, you've seen me shooting uh, bees on white background. And I'm going to show you uh, what happens after, where the magic happens, uh, transferring the images to my computer and starting to um, process them in a way that uh, just represent the bee in its... Uh, most natural form and color. So for this I'm using uh, Adobe Lightroom 6 and I'm using another program called GIMP. So first uh, in this video I will show you uh, what I do with the photo in Adobe Lightroom 6. So first of all I'm importing the photo and you can see they're already imported but I'm going to show you the process of importing these photos. Uh, I'm just uh, clicking on import EOS digital card you can see all the photo here are the one that are already on the card. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to teach you how to use Lightroom. It's going to be a very long process. It's just selecting the photos that have already been imported and all of that. Just ignore all of that for the moment. What you're interested in is, you can see I've got some uh, develop settings, uh, which will be applied to all the photo I'm importing now. I will put some uh, keywords like uh, Brussels, capital region, Entophila, which is the fancy name to say they are bees. So these are just typical settings I'm using for keywords for uh, importing. I will detail what is hidden behind that. So normally I'm just clicking on import, already I imported all these photos. So I'm just going to click on cancel and you can see here the photos which I took uh, in the previous video. The first bee that was not moving much, the small nomada bee, uh, and then the Entophora which I shot after uh, the video stopped. So if you take uh, these three photos for example, they're all of the same species and uh, what I want to do is to see which one is best for our purpose. So for that, just uh, up, zooming in on all these guys. So this is the first one, second one, and third one. So already you can see the shape is slightly different. I don't like this one because you see the front leg is kind of bending backward, which is not very natural for a bee. Uh, I like this and I like that. So the main difference between these two photos uh, is this one you can really see very well, the mandible, very long, uh, very long, very uh, linear mandible. So I'm going to wait for the image to fully load. And there we go. So the eye is kind of sharp. You can see it's got white hair on the face. Uh, the bum is not very in focus. You can see very clearly the aureolum and all of that. So let's compare this and that. I'm going to compare both images. So I'm just clicking on these two, pushing on C, and there we go. So you can easily compare two images. So this one is loading. Uh, that's how I do to see which one is the sharpest. You can see the EXIF here, one two hundred of a second, F14, ISO 200. If your photo is a bit dark, the background is not fully white, you can just uh, increase the ISO or reduce the aperture or uh, just make it a bit slower. So here the eye is not as sharp, it's a, it's a bummer, um, but the abdomen, the, the metanotum is pretty sharp. Um, so it all depends what the characters to identify this bee are. So I'll have to identify the bee and then I will decide which is good. So first, uh, I think in the first time I'm going to just show you how I process this one. So I'm selecting the photo and then I'm clicking on D for development. So I do have some presets uh, which I use. One of them is called uh, um, where it is. Uh, 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 MYN Basics. So MYN Basics is uh, from the Meteor Neighbor project which I joined uh, poof, 
long time ago, almost 10 years ago. And um, now I'm doing my own stuff. So here, uh, what does this preset do? Well, it's fairly easy. It's just, uh, if you're looking on this side of the screen, I'm just gonna zoom in, see if it works. Oh yes, great. So looking at all these things, uh, it doesn't touch any of these settings at first, but it increased the Y to 30 and decreased the black by 30. Then add a bit of clarity, vibrance and saturation. It's playing a bit on the contrast uh, here, plus 20, minus 20. Um, and then pretty much uh, nothing else. A bit of sharpening, uh, a bit of noise reduction, uh, a bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of all of that. So nothing really miraculous. Uh, but it kind of starts uh, showing what I want. If I remove these values, you'll see the image will be very blend. I'm shooting RAW, you see CR2. I'm shooting RAW, and so the image, when they come out of the camera, look pretty much like this. They're a bit more blend. So adding minus S and plus 30 helps a bit. So I don't know if the background is fully white yet. You can see there's a shadow here. Uh, what I'm doing is that I'm pushing on J, and it will show you the blue things are pure black and the red things are pure white. You can see nothing is pure white. So I'm going to push again a bit more here, I'm pushing to 40. Ah, now we go. So you see all of that is pure white. You can see there's a bit of dirt, there's a bit of paper that has shadow. I'm gonna push it a bit more to 50. There we go, that's what I want. 50 is good. Uh, I'm going to push the black down a bit. Uh, to compensate on the other side. I'm going to, usually I put, for the shadows, I put half of the value of black. So uh, if I put minus 50, I will put plus 20. And for the highlight, I do the same. If I put plus 50, I'm gonna put minus 20. So that's all good. It looks good. I'm gonna remove this. Um, good contrast, good colors, all good. But, you can see there's still some dirt in here. I need to clean that up. The easiest way I found to clean that up is to use a brush. So just my brush. And for the brush, I'm going to essentially overexpose by four so that it's very, very um, bright. So if I'm just using that tool for highlight 100, shadow 100. So I'm just gonna pass through the B and you can see the effect. It's essentially burning the photo to the white. You see, up, oh, make a big slash through the B. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is to use it to clean up the edges here. So you see, all the dust, all the dirt is going to be removed and leaving a nice smooth edge and then no dirt left. There we go. Up. So sometimes you have like a hair or like a piece of pollen or something, you can just click and it will suddenly disappear. So there we go. Uh, this needs to be a bit uh, better framed. Uh, oops, there we go. A bit like that. So for framing, uh, the shortcut is R. You see, R will just bring you to this uh, cropping tool. It's really useful to learn all the shortcuts. You see, to go from uh, R to uh, K to uh, all these different views, G to go for the grid view, D for to go for the development view. All of these shortcuts are very useful to learn. Um, and now I do have my final image ready to go. It's nice, it's sharp. You can see there's a bit of cotton from the toilet paper probably. If you want to know where the toilet paper intervene, you just have to see the previous video. So this one is for me final, I'm gonna mark it as picked and it will be part of the final data set. Uh, let's look at the other B I shot on the video, which is a small nomada. You see, it's a good photo too. The first thing I will do is probably just crop it. So R for crop tool, and then I'm gonna push X twice to make this a bit smaller. X, X, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna frame it like this. You can see on the bottom third, on the right third for the eye. So that's good. Let's check how the colors are. So I push on J and you can see there is very little white, very little black. So I need to increase the contrast here. One time, two time, two time is good. 50, one time, two time is good. 
and then maybe just a little bit of this a little bit of that that's pretty much what I want and again I'm going to use K the brush uh, to burn all the dirt here on the side you see there's a bit of a spot here as well I'm gonna delete it up 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 yeah I say hop a lot and there we go so now the image looks clean it looks bright you can see it's got a beautiful eye you can see it's got two red spots uh, you can see it has uh, a tricolor uh, abdomen a little tuft of hair so yep that's pretty much all right and I'm going to look at the other photo as well uh, showing the face and it looks like it's got some brown lines on the back so I should have shot lines on the back as well but you can clearly see also uh, the antennae which are uh, brownish orangish on the underside so the the size the relative size of the um, uh, antenna article is important the color of the uh, clipeus is important of the labrum is important the shape of the uh, teeth is important you can't see that in the photo um, the different colors on the abdomen are very important the spots the spots on the on the thorax uh, are very important for the identification of these bees so most of the features are visible on this photo and one that are not visible on the first photo will be visible on this photo so that's what i want and so i'm gonna just pick this one as confirmed and let's go for the last one uh, so you see i've got the uh, antiphora here so i'm going to just uh, if you push on plus it's just gonna increase the size of these thumbnails you can see here uh, so that's the antiphora and i told you it's got like a very feathery hair um, on the leg so this is what i was talking about this is really key for male antiphora plumipes identification so i've got other bees that i shot that day but let's go back to this one so um, you can see the background is not very clean it's been there was a lot of dust on the paper when i shot it here the legs are not very well separated not so good that's pretty all right here is good you can see the yellow face you can see the hairy legs you can even see the details on the wing three um, cells submarginal cells so yeah mm, the choice will be difficult and the thing is processing these photos i spend more time choosing the good photo than actually working on the photo so usually what i do is that i work two by two so these ones are very similar i'm just uh, selecting these two clicking on the C and then comparing what I want first of all is uh, I'm a bit of a perfectionist I like to have a sharp eye it's something in human nature when you see another animal you look at the eyes to assess uh, if there is a danger and to try to identify it and uh, so if the eye is not sharp usually you feel a bit confused you try to understand what's wrong uh, so I try to always get a very nice and sharp eye so the eye is sharp here the eye is even sharper here you can even see the different uh, cells the legs is sharp in both cases you can see the hair you can see everything okay so I'm going to check the histogram and you can see the one on the left as the, the curve is slightly more to the left and this one on the right is a bit more to the right why does that mean that means that this one has a bit more light than this one so it's going to be easier to process this one so up oh, i'm picking this one going back to the selection these two images are very similar um so let's compare both look good you can see the yellow on the face but you can see it better on this one you can see the feathery legs let's check the histogram oh, similar again okay um difficult choice really difficult choice let's see also the base of the antenna the scape is yellow um i think this one looks like a bit more natural and i'm gonna pick this one uh, and then uh, what i can do is just to compare the one i just selected with this one again hmm.
That's pretty sharp too. And there we go. Now I'm gonna keep. Now this one is good too. So you see, it's a it's a fairly long and tedious process to really select the photos you want. Um, but once you've selected the good photos, and this one looks a bit funny. Um, okay, let's let's just say I pick one of these photos. I'm just gonna take all the one I selected. Let's say I'm going to process this one. So I'm going to D for development and clicking on J to see if there is anything black or white yet. No. So I'm going to increase this by one, two, oh, sorry, J, one, two, still nothing. That's weird. Let me see what's wrong. Oh, there we go. Wrong options. Up one, two. Okay, so that's good. Should I push three? Yeah, maybe three. On the other side, just that looks about right. I'm gonna increase this, decrease this. So you see now it's good. I need to clean up a bit. I don't want to clean up too much because I don't want the air to disappear. I still need to get a bit of a shadow behind them so otherwise they will kind of disappear in the white background up cleaning the dirt with a little tool and this is it. just gonna recrop it a bit so that we have what we need for the atlas of the wild bees of brussels so there we go here is our enter for our primipest mail everything i need yellow mask you can see the details of the wings you can see the back legs you can see the middle legs you can see the front legs you can see the front middle and back legs are all very very different and uh, you can see also that the third article of the antenna is extremely long so all of these are important characters for identifying this bee and uh, so this is the process it's um, how i'm processing my photos and you can see uh, with all these I have, I still have quite some work for the rest of the day. So I hope you enjoy this. Oh, that's a beautiful one too. Uh, I hope you enjoy this and uh, I hope that uh, you're going to start uh, experimenting with your camera, start taking some nice photos and post them on the Wild BNB uh, Facebook group so that we can help you process them, identify them and uh, deal with this whole thing. Oh, this last thing I did mention. All these photos are keyworded. Um, I'm, as I said, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I've created a series of keywords for the identification of bees. So this is an Andrena and you can see in my keywords here on the right side, everything I have is organized according to the systematic. So these are animals, arthropod, insect, hymenopterus, apoidida, uh, they are uh, bees from the Andrenidae family, Andrena, and then I will have to select which species of Andrena it is. Um, so you see all these keywords are integrated in the photo. So when you do a Google search, when you're um, exporting the photo, all the keywords will be included um, in the photo and will allow people to receive the photo to know what the bee is. So it also allow me to suddenly uh, very easily select a picture of a particular bee depending on what I need. I can just click on this and it will show me all the photos I have of that sp particular species and I can select to display only the male or the female of that species and I've done that for pretty much um, all the bees I photographed over the last uh, uh, decade or so. So you can see all the different uh, genera, all the different species of bees I photographed are all listed here um, in my Lightroom database. If you're interested in that, I can show you one another day uh, how I process these keywords and organize them, um, but it's a lesson in itself. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope that you're gonna 
uh, take some of this confinement time to improve your photo technique you don't need to start shooting bees directly you can start shooting things from your kitchen you can start shooting a piece of breadcrumb you can start to shoot uh, um, a coin to uh, learn to diffuse your light um, what I show you here seems easy but it's 10 years of uh, try and practice so I'm happy to share all my secrets with you and to uh, help you learn photography but the most important is that you need to practice that's really the key to get some good result so I wish you a nice confinement and I hope that you're gonna be all right and take care of yourself don't go out keep your social distancing and Let's beat this together.